Maranatha, the Lord comes. Praise the Lord. Thank you once again for joining me today. Today we're going to continue on our teaching. We'll be looking at Israel because we realize that Israel is very, very important for us in understanding prophecy, past, present, and future. Now, prophecy is not about Israel. Prophecy is not about any single nation or individual. Prophecy is about God, His Messiah, and His kingdom. But Israel have a very peculiar and particular um, place in the plan and the purpose of God, in prophecy, in understanding prophecy, Israel place is very important. If we get it wrong with Israel, we will get it wrong with prophecy. This has nothing to do with Israel, Jewish supremacy as people will want us to think about. This has everything to do with God's calling and gift. That God in His sovereignty, God in His, in His, in His omnipotence and omniscience power, God in his own love has chosen the Israelite to be his servant, his witness. And we said that the same way that God called Israel, God also called the church. Okay, so election is not about merit. It's not about supremacy. Election is about God who elects. It is about God, but it's also about the mission of God. Election is not about picnic. It's not about us enjoying God. Yes, we will enjoy God, but we enjoy God so that we can be God's witness to other nation. It's all about God's mission. And what God gives you, He gives you for other people to enjoy. And this is very, very important. And we saw, unfortunately, that the unfortunate things about Israel, just as with Adam and Eve, just as with Noah, is that they did not fulfill God's mission. Unfortunately, they broke the covenant, they broke the agreement with God, and they brought themselves under a mighty, mighty form of curse. And we've read that the last time in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, you read about the blessing and the curses of the law. And God warned them that if this happened to you, this is what is, if, if you disobey, if you don't fulfill the calling of God upon your life, this is what is going to happen to you. And so we saw very graphically in that Hebrews, I mean Deuteronomy chapter, uh, chapter 28 that we read, verses 58 to 67, we, we read graphically there, almost in, in, in a succinct summary, what the Jews have experienced down the century, okay? They, they were uprooted from their land, they were hunted down, they were, they were lied against, they were killed, they, they were reduced in number, they had trembling of heart, everything that the Jews have been through. We read it in that, in that place. Now, I said that Jonah actually is an example of what we see here happening to the children of Israel. Yes, Jonah is a type of the Christ, but Jonah is also a type of Israel. Now, the first thing we see in the life of Jonah is this, that Jonah was chosen and elected and given a job to do, just like Israel was given a job to do. We read that in Jonah chapter 1. God gave him a job. God gave him a vision. God elected him. God called him, just like God called the children of Israel. And God gave them a mission. God gave them a work to do. But just like the children of Israelites, Jonah failed in his responsibility. Just like the children of Israelite, the same thing that the Israelite did, Jonah refused. And he had his reason. He didn't want to go to, to Nineveh. Because they were enemies of the Jews. He didn't want, he would be happy for God to destroy them rather than he go in there and prophesy. You see, this is the point when there's a calling of God upon your life, God will send you to bless your enemy. So when people talk about, you know, God was, you know, playing partiality when he called the children, do you know how difficult it can be sometimes to be an instrument in God's hands? 
difficult because you you have your own thinking you you you, you have your own flesh but God's way are not our ways God was sending Jonah to the enemy to deliver them from certain destruction and Jonah said no I'm not going to go I'm going to run in the other direction so that they can come to, to a certain destruction because they were the enemies of the Jew but the Bible says that if you see your enemy in need the Bible says you should supply that need and that is the calling and God calling of God the Bible says we should bless our enemy and not cost them that is the calling of God upon us as 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 a believer as a Christian so we see that just like the Israelite Jonah himself is a type of Israelite he took off but what happened to Jonah just like the Israelite Jonah fell in his in his responsibility Israelite fell in their responsibility just like Jonah they turned from God they fell into disobedience into idolatry into sin and we're going to see that in a little bit so what happened to Jonah Jonah ran away from God, but he ran into trouble. He ran, there was storm on the sea. Finally, to cut a long story short, they threw him into the sea. And just like Jonah, the children of Israel were thrown into the sea of the Gentile generation around them, into the turbulence, into the uncertainty. Of the sea of the Gentiles power there was no protection you remember that the, the, the devil went to God and said uh, God said have you seen Job and the devil said well why would he serve you 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 have an egg around him I can't get to him you see nobody could get to his trail as long as they were obeying God fulfilling his will and mandate for their life but now they disobey God the head was gone and they, they, they were thrown just like Jonah was thrown into the turbulent sea the children of Israel were thrown over into the as it were into the, the Gentiles nation around them but before we continue in the parallel between Jonah and the children of Israel, let's go back. You remember where we we ended our our teaching. We we were talking at, before I ended. We we ended at the children of Israel, okay, under Moses, where Moses has given them this instruction and this warning with respect to what God expected from them, the blessing that God would give them, and the curses that they would bring upon themselves if they disobey. But then let's see what happened. So all this happened while they were in the wilderness. So Moses died. Joshua took over from them. Joshua brought them into the land. He divided the land between them. And Joshua, just like Moses, warned them about the fact that God has called them to be separate. Touch not unclean things. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. That God has called them. God has separated them unto himself so that he can be a witness unto the Lord. Unfortunately, once Joshua, Caleb, and that generation died, the Bible says that they began to do what was right in their own sight. So this is the story that we read in the book of Judges. So when you read the book of Judges, essentially the book of Judges is a cycle. It's about seven cycle of these children of Israel. It's a cycle of children of Israel walking away from God. Living the life of the Gentiles around them. Going into sin and apostasies. Living life like the Gentiles around them. Serving their God. Marrying their women. And then God bringing them under judgment, foreign nation coming in and, you know, um, carrying them away, conquering them, taking their land um, and carrying them away into captivity or putting them under bondage, paying every tax. And then they cry unto the Lord and God, the Lord raised up a judge and then the judge delivered them from their um from their enemy and their oppressors and then in the life of the judge they, they, they serve God and when the judge died and then bang they are back again so you have this cycle 
this cycle of sin and judgment and repentance and sin and judgment and repentance god raised up a judge the judge judging them during that period and then it goes again and again and again obviously until it came to Samuel. and that is what we see happening over there they fell into this judgment that god has already prophesy ahead warning them until he came to to Samuel and finally in the time of Samuel just like the the nation around them the gentile nation around them they asked for a king you remember the story they asked for a king Samuel thought that was not a good idea God said well that's what they wanted give it to them so the first king was so obviously so messed up we know the story didn't obey god's command god told him don't do this that's exactly what he did obviously that was the spirit of the children of israel around him but by the grace of god their second king was david who in many ways was a type of the lord jesus christ in fact the bible says that jesus is going to sit and reign upon the throne of david so david was a type of messiah in the Old Testament, but it was not without his own fault. And you know the story, David died, and then um, Solomon became king, and Solomon died, and his son Rehoboam became king. And in the time of his son Rehoboam, the kingdom was divided into two. And this is very important. The kingdom was divided into two, and we have a ten northern kingdom which went together and were ruled by Jeroboam and we have the two southern kingdom which was the kingdom of Judah and Benjamin and they were ruled by Rehoboam so the ten northern kingdom retained the name Israel while the two southern kingdom were called Judah remember what we said about the progression of the label of this group of people initially they were the Hebrews then the Israelites and this is where the name Jews started coming in. No, not at this stage, but this is the beginning. It is this division of the kingdom. So Israel was divided, okay, into ten northern kingdoms, and they retained being the biggest, bigger, being the bigger part of the division. So they retained the name Israel, and the two northern tribe, that's the southern. Sorry, the two tribe in the southern kingdom they were called judah and jew is actually the nickname for judah okay right so this is where the division came in unfortunately the 10 northern tribe from that point onwards so the 10 northern tribe the israelite the 10 northern tribe from that point onward went away and away and away and away from god okay they had king after king that were very evil that took people's mind away from god that led people in the way of baal that caused israel to worship baal and finally in 730 bc israel the ten northern kingdom were conquered by the assyrians and that tribe never came back they were scattered they were conquered by the assyrians the assyrians were the world power in those days they were brutal they were wicked they come in and destroy and routed completely the 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 northern ten northern tribe of the Israelite, the ten northern tribe, destroy them completely. They, they were scattered, and that tribe, that ten tribe, never never came back again. And that was in 730 BC. There are two things I want to mention with respect to that. Number one is that before this happened. God sent to them prophet after prophet after prophet warning them of the danger of sin, warning them of the danger of apostasy, warning them of the danger of what God has already warned them back in Deuteronomy. That if they don't repent, that if they continue in their sin, they will be scattered, that they will throw themselves into this um judgment that has been written but they will not listen sometimes they kill the prophet sometimes they they beat the prophet they, they didn't listen to them 
until finally judgment fell upon them and the Assyrian came, completely destroyed their land and that tribe, that ten tribe was dispersed. Two things I want to mention about this. So this is what we call the ten lost tribe of Israel. You know, there is all sort of conspiracy nowadays where people talk about this ten lost tribe of Israel and people talk about the fact that they were blacks, you know, people talk about all this conspiracy train, the black Hebrew, I don't know where people got all these things from. If you read the scripture, it is very, very simple. But let me say something about this tribe. Technically, there's no ten lost tribe of Israel. Number one, when Israel was divided into two, now this is very important, when Israel was divided into two, the righteous people, the people that love the Lord, the people that whose heart was not happy with all the sin and apostasy that was taking place in the southern, in the northern kingdom, in the kingdom of Israel, they migrated to the south. Okay? And obviously also, the people in the south that wanted the life of sin, that wanted to be part of their, the sin that was happening in the north, they migrated to the north. I mean, it's just like nowadays. I live in UK at the moment. I mean, if you go to London, you have people that come from all across UK that lives in London. It's the same thing. So even though, yes, the, the Ten Northern Kingdom went, it was, was scattered and they never came back again. But the truth is that you have people from all the tribe of Israel living in the Southern Kingdom. That is my point. So in a sense, the no tribe was lost. Okay, you could say the people that live in the northern kingdom were scattered. But what we are saying is that the righteous men and women that were living in the northern kingdom, whose heart was not happy with what was going on in that part of Israel, they migrated into Judah. So this is very, very important. Now, so remember what we said about Jonah. That when Jonah disobeyed God, when Jonah refused to do what God told him to do, he was thrown into the sea. Just, just not a calm sea, he was thrown into a turbulent, turbulent sea. And it's the same thing that we see here with the Israelites. So the ten northern kingdom was thrown into the sea, into the Gentile world, and they were lost completely. But the, the two northern i mean the two southern tribes southern tribe that is the tribe of judah or well, i shouldn't say the tribe of judah let's say judah remember that southern kingdom contained majorly two tribes and also all the other righteous people from the other ten tribes who wants to live in jerusalem and worship god in truth and in holiness all they con they continue for over 100 years more after the destruction of the northern kingdom unfortunately now when you read now this is very important when, so when you read the book of judges you will see that i mean you read the book of judges then you go to the book of kings then you will see that the the the, the nation was divided into two like i said none of the king in the northern kingdom was righteous but you will see that in the southern kingdom they have good number of righteous kings. They have the Jehoshaphat. They they have kings like that, that that seek the face of God, that brought revival to the land, and that saw the presence of God manifested, the intervention of God in their life. They were they were light to the nation. They they have proselytes coming in and joining themselves to the God of Israel. So you have that. Unfortunately. Even the southern kingdom also started going into apostasies. Remember, during this period, the prophet began to come into their own, bringing the word from the Lord. God actually bringing word, word of, of, of caution, warning, 
prophet coming in and warning them of the danger ahead if they don't repent, if they continue in their sin, in their stubbornness, in their rebellion. Unfortunately, they will not listen. So finally, in 536 BC, Judah also was attacked and conquered by the Babylonian, you know, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar attacked Judah. The king of Judah at this time was Zedekiah. So I have not gone into all the story, the rebellion and all the process. I'm jumping all that. But essentially, Babylonian, the Babylonians came. They attacked Judah. They tore down the wall. They burnt the city with fire. It killed the, the sons of, of Zedekiah, um, the king. And also, much more importantly, the temple of Solomon that had been built in Jerusalem was destroyed. And that was very, very important. And the Babylonian took many of the people of Judah into captivity in Babylon and leaving only behind the poorest and the weakest of the people. And this is the era that you read in the book of Daniel. So Daniel, Meshach, Shedrach, and Abednego, these were some of the children from the royal blood that were taken captive by the Babylonian and were taken into exile. So remember at that point in time, this was over 100 years since the northern kingdom of Israel has fallen, now Judah also has fallen, okay? And even though some people were still left behind, so they were not totally scattered, but it was only the old and the weak and the poor that were left behind in Jerusalem, the, the, the strong and, and the royal blood, they were all taken as elves out to Babylon. And remember also that the wall was broken was born, the city was born with, with fire, the walls were broken, and also the temple was totally destroyed. The question is, will God deliver his people? That's the question. Would the Lord be faithful to, to them, even though they had been unfaithful to him? Were they still the people of God? Now, they've ripped the ultimate reward of their disobedience just like Jonah they have been thrown into the water they have been thrown into this wild stormy water they've been taken as captive into Babylon they failed in their responsibility just like Jonah they've turned away from God they fell into disobedience, idolatry, and sin. So God has visited them, casted them overboard into the sitting sea of the nation, just like Jonah was swallowed up into the stormy sea. So the Israel has been scattered abroad into the nation, just as God predicted. So the question is this. Jonah was preserved. Wasn't, he, wasn't Jonah preserved? Even though he was thrown into the sea but he didn't die he was preserved he was swallowed up by the fish the question is will the children of israel be preserved and that will be the focus of our next teaching thank you for joining me today god bless you and see you next time bye